introduction. <laughs> um, thank you, Christina. Thank you, Ted, for, for having me here. Thank you all for coming today. Um, how long have we been coming here? Like seven, eight years? Yeah. And usually I come here and I talk about Aisha and Voodoo. That's what I like to talk about. <laughs> so this is a something build a departure, maybe be more abstract, be more personal, maybe something that we can all relate to. So we're going to talk about Vision Quest. I remember the first time I heard about Vision Quest. We were in Brazil doing some ayahuasca ceremonies, as you do, uh, with a small group, oh, actually a big group, and then one ceremony at some point, oh, this guy was missing. Oh, what is Casey? What is Casey? His name was Casey. Um, oh, he's doing Vision Quest. Vision Quest. You know, already the seed was planted into my mind. It's like, this is magical words. I didn't know what it was, and in a nutshell, you know, you go into the wildness, into nature, three nights, four days, more or less, without food, without people, without shelter, and you spend time there. That's your vision quest. And that's what Casey was doing in the Brazilian Amazon. And I thought, oh, this is amazing, this is amazing. It took me seven years of thinking about it before I did it <laughs> um, a couple of years ago. Uh, in, in Wales, which is maybe not as deep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we can talk about it. But, uh, uh, the, 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 the actual experience itself of being alone in nature, fasting, it's uh, regardless of where you are, regardless of who you are, um, around the world, around the times, you know, the experience it's the same for, for everybody. So before we start, um, I like that we kind of maybe um, forget about the noise of the day and all the things that we went through and all the people that we met and talked to and the social media and we stay a few moments in silence together. <coughs> Okay, talking about Vision Quest. Vision Quest, it's about us, it's about being human. And being human, it's about the human experience. It's about whatever happens to our life, the agony and the ecstasy and everything in between. You know, and our human life, human history, is marked by different stages in life. And the first one is birth. Difficult one sometimes. And then you go into childhood, adolescence, adulthood, marriage, maybe, parenthood. And then, I don't know, divorce, middle age, uh, you know, retirement, getting old, and then you die. And all those different stages are, well, you know, the, the, our life is just, it's just beautiful. And in ancient times, every stage was celebrated. You know, you, you marked it with the ceremony, with the ritual. You go from one stage to the other. And everybody has to go through the ritual. And why you do that? Because you'll understand what it means to go into the next stage. The responsibilities attached to it. You're not a child anymore, you're an adult. What does it mean to become a man, to become a woman, or whatever you want? Um, you know, that, 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 that what happened in, 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 uh, in the society helps you, gives you the tool to understand. But in our modern times, well, this is not the case because technology has arrived and so it has removed the meaning, the sacred content to everything. So we go through different stages in life, but we don't know where we are. We, we don't, we don't, uh, what am I supposed to be here? Because there's no tools to help you. Um, this is, this is um, frustrating and can create a lot of suffering, a lot of anxiety and stress and crisis, and we don't know our position anymore within ourselves, within our life, within our universe. And so what do we do? Then we ask the help of someone, the hero who's gonna come and save us. You know, there's always someone else who's gonna help us. What about us? 
we can help ourselves? Maybe that's what Vision Quest is about, and we're going to talk about more about this. But nowadays, okay, we're in London, what do we do? Well, we go to the therapist, and we go to the doctor, and we go to the priest. And mainstream religion is great if you have unshakable faith, it's going to help you. But for those of us who do not believe in mainstream religion, what do we do? Uh, we might go to a therapy. You know, any therapy that you want. But therapy is very patient-centered. You have, you're a patient, you have a problem, we're going to find a cure with the expert. In ancient times, traditional culture, this is not about this, it's community center. You have an imbalance, a spiritual imbalance. You're going to address, you're going to find the equilibrium, and you're going to benefit, and all the community is going to benefit. Not just you. If you heal, it's not for yourself, it's for everybody else. And again, I'm going to talk about it this over and over. Um, and people are very lazy nowadays, and they don't want to do any spiritual work. Yeah, approval. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you can go, and maybe it's much easier to find a master or a guru, and you just follow, and then you pray. You know, you know that that figure, or maybe the photography of the guru. That's enough, and you're going to suck all the energy, and that's how you're going to heal. And gurus are amazing, the masters are amazing, but they give you the food. They cannot force you to eat. They give you the tools to build your house, your palace, but they're not going to build it for you. They're not all powerful. Even the sun is not all powerful. If you close the curtain, it cannot come in. You know? So maybe we should think about what can we do ourselves. And of course, we're also very lazy, and if we have headache, we take a pill. <laughs> And uh, the day after, we still have the headache, so we take another pill. <laughs> and the day after, headache again, so we take two pills. And we increase the dose, but that weakness is always there. We're not healing anything. So what about us being our own guru, our own shaman, our own doctor, our own therapy? How do we do that? So, vision quest. Right of passage are highly effective as means of accepting and finding meaning of life changing. So understanding what does it mean to go through a different stage in your life. Empowering individual to be vital force in the community. It's not about you. It's about your influence. Your, your how you're gonna, uh, you know, change the life around you. Um, generate self reliance, courage, endurance. Of course, self control because you're going to do something you know, can be intense, can be, you know, you're going to develop all this, everything to activate self-healing mechanism. You're going to heal yourself. And ultimately, producing insight, wisdom, and illumination, which is always handy. Um, <laughs> now, Hero Quest. Hero Quest, not the board game from the 80s, but he, Hero Quest as, as a prototype. You know, Joseph Campbell, you know, you become... You're, you become the hero. You're going to make your own story. You're going to make your own, your own myth. And the association between Vision Quest and Hero Quest is, is, quite, is quite an obvious one. You go through this dragon-ridden passage of personal crisis, and you go and look for the Holy Grail, for the vision, and then you're going to bring it back to the community who is there waiting for you, the return of the hero. This is lovely. And you're going to be the protagonist of that story. You're going to make that story. Pause so I can breathe. <laughs> and I'm talking a lot. Um, and, uh, and you're going to be the protagonist, and you're going into this spiritual world which everything has a double meaning. So, an animal is also an animal and a spirit guide. And a star is a star and an angel. And a dream is a dream and a divine visitation. A mosquito is a pest and a messenger. So, everything takes different value, different meaning. And in Native American, uh, because Vision Quest happens everywhere, all the time, but I'm talking about in reference to the Native American, obviously, uh, there are countless ways of doing Vision Quest. There is not a single one. There is not a correct way of doing Vision Quest. And the version of the Sioux might be different than the one of the Cheyenne, and the one from the Crow different than the Peyote. But, the, the, the peyote. but it, it doesn't matter. This is... A, um, it's, it's, it's we all the experience. Every time you do a vision quest, it's the same and yet different because you are doing it. And no one is going to be there to tell you how to do it. Um, there are some directions, but then you're going to be on your own. Um, 
And some people have protested because, oh, maybe it's too difficult to do Vision Quest. You know, our new generation, the millennia, maybe they cannot go without food for three, four days, mm -hmm. you know, alone. How are they going to do? <laughs> but, you know, we are the same people that we were 2,000 years ago. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. If they could do it then, we could do it now. The connection with nature has not been lost. We think so, but it's not been lost. So, we, you know, we, 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 we need a little bit of the, of the danger. Otherwise, it's not going to be a ritual. It's not going to be an initiation, you know, a ceremony. Just do some finance. Um, and, and that will test your commitment. You want to go from childhood to adulthood? Then be committed to it. Make a mark, make a sign, do it. You know, otherwise, how are you going to do it? Um, and this story, sorry, I'm going to be dropping the paper. Um, this story usually has three parts. End, middle, beginning. So it starts with the end, middle, and beginning. The, the end is also the severance, the middle is the threshold, and the end is the incorporation. So severance is when it's the separation, is when you have to renounce to everything. You want to say bye to your previous life. You turn your back on your modern life, your <laughs> loved ones, your family, your friends, whoever. And you're going to go into the next stage of life. And it takes a bit of time of preparation as well. This is not something that by everybody, and I'm not saying that you have to abandon anybody. You're just going to abandon, you're going to abandon that life that you had, that persona that you were, and you're going to become something else. The transformation. But you're still going to have the, the beautiful loved one and friends and everything. It's just that you're going to be changing. So you have to leave everything. And then when you get clear, close to the moment of vision quest, and there's always this kind of like self-defensive mechanism, thinking, oh, I'm a worthy, can I do it? I'm going to survive. And this is normal. But, you know, you question yourself, and this is how you, you answer yourself. Yes, I'm going to do it. It's the commitment. And then the, the second part, the middle phase, the threshold, is the adventure. You know, think about the hero. It's the ordeal. You're going to go and do your story. You're going to do your, your myth. And you're going to lose something of yourself. Something that is not important will fall away. It's natural. Otherwise, you're going to be the same as before. Something will change. And uh, with the idea of threshold is also the idea of passage, going through a different, a different, uh, through a gate, through a door, to a different state of your, of your, um, of your life. <coughs> there is death, and then there is birth, rebirth, second birth. And that is the, trans is the formula of human transformation. You have to go through that way. You know, it's like giving birth. It's like dying and reborn. You know, that is the formula. And there's always an element of risk, and I say that. But, of course, in ways maybe not so much risk, as in the jungle in the Amazon, or in the desert of Utah, whatever. But there is that danger, and it's necessary to be there. Up to a point, but it's necessary. And you can choose different rite of passages that have bigger danger. You might do fire walking, or, or sweat lodge, or death lodge, or sun dancing. You know, you can choose whatever you want. But the severity or degree of suffering, it's not always transformational. It's, it doesn't mean that because it's the harder, you're more suffering, more pain, then it's going to be more beneficial. It's whatever works for you. Um, <clears throat> And you're going to have many things that are going to help you. As I say, there is no, no teacher, no master, no priest, no guru, nothing of that. But you can have tools that are going to help you through the journey. The power of fasting. The power of isolation. That are going to help you to understand the mystery of nature. The power of boredom. There's a lot of it. Um, <laughs> to open the door of awareness. The power of weakness, plenty of it, to find source of strength. Power of loneliness, to call upon those we truly love. Power of emptiness, to produce feelings of fullness. And power of darkness, to initiate illumination. And those things, those powers are going to be there for you all the time. Um, and because you're alone, everything you do, it's for your eyes only. There is no judging, there is no pretense, there is no illusion. It's a sacred space, you do it as you want. 
And the final part is incorporation. Incorporation is from incorporare, to put into your body, to assimilate into one body. So you return after your adventure, you go back into the civilized world and, uh, and uh, you're not an initiate anymore, but you're initiated. And you join the other people, in traditional culture you join the other people who have done vision quests before you. And their acceptance is a validation of your quest. Nowadays, maybe you come back from Vision Quest and nobody cares. <laughs> you went through everything, got a vision, and everything. nobody cares. <laughs> because they've been clubbing the weekend or something. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it, it, it's true, you have to, you, this is something that can affect you. I mean, I was lucky enough, I had a lot of support, both from family and friends, like lots. And, and I came back home and Othon was there waiting for me and it was beautiful. And you feel it because there is a calm down. I'll tell you afterwards. Um, <laughs> so, I think before everything, before you prepare yourself, the most important thing is why. Why you want to do it. You know, the reasons are the most important, your intention. If you don't know why you're going to do it, then don't do it. Um, this is not a decision that you have to make, you can make lightly or in the, in the heat of a romantic passion. You have to examine yourself and find the reason. Why do I want to do this? If you think, what are your expectations? If you think like Prometheus, that you're going to go and steal the sacred fire from the throne of the gods and that fire is going to extinguish. If you think they're going to have like ecstatic dances in an altered state of consciousness, then you're never, never going to be peaceful, never be quiet. If you think you're going to have a quick fix, yeah, just going to go there, vision quest, illuminated. You're going to be so disappointed. You're going to feel cheated, puzzled. You're not going to bring anything back to help uh, your community. So think about the reason. And if you don't have, if you don't know the reason, if you don't know what you're looking for, then you're not going to find it. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to find it. So always ask yourself, why am I doing it? If you don't have this answer, then think in twice. And the reason? Do not have to mean for any, anybody else. They have to be important just for you. That's fine. It's your, it's your decision. You don't have to explain to anybody. But you have to have strong reason. And those reasons cannot be just like, oh, I want to hug trees. I want to be alone. Because Alone in nature is such a lovely thing to do anyway, but that's not enough good reason to do it. You know, think about it a lot of time. And people are going to make, I'm going to create doubts on you. You know, I have a friend say to me, okay, but why are you going to, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's your holiday, you've been waiting one year to go on holidays, and, and you're going to go alone, no protection, so if it rains, you're going to get wet. No food, and you're going to pay for it. <laughs> and those sentences kind of like goes into your mind. I'm like, and they test you all the time. Oh, maybe it's not. No. If they create doubts, then you're not ready to go. So just stay with your intention. Once you know what you're doing, just keep it. Keep it. As I said, every, every history is, is different. There's one constant, which is Mother Nature. That is always there, and you will understand its rhythm, and you're gonna beautifully merge with it. Um, now, Christianity did start with uh, Jesus going to the desert, you know, fasting in the desert. You know, this is a uh, we, we might all relate to that, and then um, Muhammad went to. Uh, fast in the cave, waiting for the Archangel Gabriel to bring the Quran. Uh, Buddha stay, staying, you know, uh, vision fasting under under a tree. Judaism, Moses going to the mountain, you know, trying to communicate with God. And of course, the North America, you know, crazy horse and black elk, you know, all doing vision quest, their own version, of course, and and trying to bring that vision, that direction for their people. Um, so it is something that is happening, you know, even in mainstream religion, you know, this is, uh, this is all connected. Um, so once you have your reason why I'm going to do it, then you have to prepare yourself. And you have to prepare yourself 
mentally, spiritually, physically, psychologically, you know, everything has to be aligned together. You cannot miss out on an element. You know, we are made of emotion, think thoughts and action. Everything has to go together into it. Otherwise, it's not happening. In the old days, the preparation phase was accorded much attention and people will go into semi-seclusion or they will observe something taboo or they change the diet. What do we do to prepare ourselves? Well, psychologically, aspect of preparation includes how ready you are, how ready you are to look deep inside yourself, to go inwardly. The greater the fear, the greater the blessing. The greater the fear, the greater the blessing. Why? Because fear will test you, will test your will, your passion, your patience, your commitment. Fear is there to create fragility, but not fragility in terms of like, oh, this is not a macho, macho game, vision quest, you're not getting any badge for it. This is fragility that shows some honesty. And honesty is a very fertile soil where you can plant a seed. And of course, you have to prepare to fast because fasting is a tricky one. Mm -hmm. um, in ancient time, people would go without food very often, no problem. Now, if we skip one meal, panic! <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if I say to people, oh, you go like four days without food, I think I'm insane. You know, what will you do that? Food is the ultimate you know, commodity, you know, blanket, you know, comfort blanket, you know. We are sad, we eat. We are happy, we eat. We want to celebrate, we eat. Birthday, we eat. Christmas, we eat. We eat all the time. We eat in between meals. Between, I love food. I eat all the time. Otto knows. I eat all the time. I'm cooking and eating. Cooking and eating. So how do you prepare yourself? You know, this is very important. Well, maybe you should skip a meal or two. You know, once you've decided, you've got your commitment, then you skip a meal or two. Maybe you stop eating meat for a while. Maybe you cut down on drugs and alcohol. Maybe you cut down on heavy food, rich food. And why you do that? To get, to get lighter, to purify. And the body is a reflection of the spirit, and the spirit is a reflection of the body. So you're actually cleaning, cleansing, purifying the body and the spirit at the same time in order to prepare yourself. And then you do the medicine walk. What is the medicine walk? Okay, so one month before you go for vision quest, you decided to go a sun, or well, you find a spot in nature, and a sun, sunrise, you go, you bring your own thing, but no food, and you spend one day until sunset, you say to the people that where you're going, and then you come back, it's nothing dangerous, and you walk one day in nature, you walk, or you sit, you meditate, whatever you want to do, you try to avoid human contact, and then you pay attention. What's happening? And maybe some people will come into your mind. And those people are going to come with you to Vision Quest. They're going to accompany you. Just, just pay attention. It's a preparation that you do. And now, how hard it is to find a spot here. We're in London. Where are you going to go? For a... So I went to Epic Forest, and it was fine. I didn't meet anybody. It was great. Um, it, was, it was perfectly fine. Then you figure, oh, I'm a, if I'm a woman alone in the forest, maybe there is... I don't know. So, you know, just, I don't know, just be careful, you know, just be careful. But there is a way of preparing yourself. It's, 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 it's okay. And then once you prepare everything, then it's time for vision quest. Then you have to go to the sacred place. So with a, with a Native American, you go towards the mountain. I went to Wales, I went to the forest. But, you know, you go towards the sacred place where the base camp is, where the elders are waiting for you, the helpers. The people are going to be there to make sure you have enough support. I'm going to talk about them. Uh, they, there you meet maybe other people are going to do vision quest at the same time. Maybe you're on your own, maybe there's other people, a small group, whatever. And you're going to meet them for the first time and you all come together and you all have different intention. All for different reason. And yet you decide to do all the same thing, but in your own way. And the elders are there, the elders is people who have done Vision Quest many times. And they've been running Vision Quest. And they know what you're going through. So they've got answer for every question. And they're going to do blessing and prayer and singing and dancing. And make sure that your experience is a safe one. Very important. Um, 
And then when you're there, you also, okay, one, one thing is nighttime. I don't know if any of you have been in nighttime in nature, alone, like in the forest. Mm -hmm. And then all sorts of things happen, mm -hmm. sounds and noise, and I've got a very vivid imagination. So <laughs> all demons appear and everything in between. And, you know, it, it can be tricky. It can be tricky. And also you're fasting. So, I don't know, anything can happen. So you need to get used to, to be alone in the, in the night. So what do you do? You do the night walk. So one day before you go to the threshold, you do the night walk, so the elders are taking you to a place. Point A, they say you walk. Point B, without light, and then you come back, hopefully. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, so, and so that is the lesson. How do you get, how do you get okay, how are you okay with the night? When you spend more time at night, you know, alone. And then, and then you see night is a friend as well, a very good friend. Another thing that you have to do is to find your power place. And all those names are great, you know, the night walk, the medicine walk, the power place. So the power place is actually where you're going to spend the time on your own. That is the place you're going to choose to do vision quest. How do you find it? I mean, how do you, you know, you're there and... Uh. So what are the parameters? It's whatever you want. You're doing vision quest. Do you want a soft ground so you're, you know, relaxed when you sleep? Do you want to have, like, a vastness of the horizon so you can feel the breath of the, of the world? Do you want to be protected from the element under a tree, in a cave? Do you want some water? Do you want some breath? Whatever you want. You choose. So you go the day before vision quest and you find it. And then you find the spot that's oh, perfect here. And then go there gently and maybe sit down a little bit and meditate and see how you feel about that place. How is the place feeling about you? And then you have a good feeling. Oh, this is nice. I like to stay here. Ask permission. There was always someone who was living there before you. Some spirit in the tree, some spirit in the grass. Someone. Ask permission. You're a guest in someone's house. You're going to be there for three, four days. Do you want to have like, do you want to be like one of those bad guests? Like those <laughs> neighbor from hell? I don't know. Just, just <laughs> ask permission and, and listen. I don't want to listen to Just listen, be aware, be attentive. You have to be always aware. And during Vision Quest, you listen to everything. You go into different perception of things. And we lost it here because there's so much noise, but once you're there, you hear it. So ask permission, okay, that is my power place. And then you go back and you got doubts. Oh, the other guy's got a better place than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did I not go there? Oh my God, that would be so much nicer. Guys, every inch of this earth is sacred. No problem. It's just your perception. If you feel that it's right, just go for it. No problem. Um, then, as I said to you, be your own shaman. Uh, so, it's the moment. So, the sun comes up. You had your dinner, your last dinner. You slept. Then you wake up. Sun Actually, even before the sun, the light, and the elders are there, preparing, waiting for you. They made a little circle of stone, carefully <coughs> prepared, and you go inside the circle, and there's magic and dancing and blessing and all everything that empowers you to go. And then that circle, the treasure circle, you step into the world of the spirit, and you start your own story. And nobody's going to touch you because it's better like this. And then you go, you find your power place, and you go. And you're going to be, as I say, you're going to be on your own. You're going to be your own shaman. So you have things that, you can, that can help you. Uh, you have the silence, as I say, that can help you to focus on your intent, to listen to your inner voice. Then there is motion. You know, you can dance, walking, climbing, kneeling, jumping, whatever you want to do. There's also all the, uh, the, the symbol that you can use of fire, mud, sweat, peace. Whatever you want to, you know, that can be used in your ceremonies. And there is also the music, of course, the singing, the rattling, the drumming, the chanting, everything that you, you can imagine. And all the ritual action of burning and smashing and name changing. We're going to talk about that. And hair cutting and going naked. There's plenty of going naked. If you want to, somehow with me, there was plenty of nakedness. Um, and I know some other quests that were doing the same. It's whatever, you know, whatever you feel. Nobody's going to tell you. You can, you can 
call on your ancestor, on the spirit, on the family, on the friends, whatever. You make your own ceremonies. And yet be careful. Don't do too many ceremonies. I mean, is the ceremony like a way of covering up the boredom, of, covering, of filling up all your space? Is it makeup a way of covering nakedness? You have, I have to warn you, don't be too focused on ceremonies because it's going to be just the expression of it and not the content. Mm -hmm. And also next to the secret, the physical world is there and the balance is very important. <clears throat> you know, you're there and at the beginning you're like a child. You know, it's, a, it's the first sun that comes and you're at the beginning of Vision Quest and you want to explore and you're curious and you climb a tree and you speak to the plant and you prepare your sleeping quarter and you, everything. And then you're thinking, oh, where is the magic? And you're expecting something crazy to happen all of a sudden. You've been preparing for years. Where are the elves and the ghosts and the spirit? And maybe nothing happened. And maybe, maybe that's what it should be. Maybe you should focus on the silence. Maybe you should focus on nature, on stillness. Just remember the reason you are there, not for a big party with the fairies. It's different. Um, it's about the relationship between you and Mother Nature. Everything is mirroring. Whatever happens inside you is mirrored on the outside. And everything that is happening outside is mirrored inside you. It's that constant communication between you and nature. And that is the medicine. Mother Nature as a manifestation of the Great Spirit. Nature as a manifestation of cosmic consciousness. Nature as the ultimate teacher, healer. And if you want to get the medicine, then you can't read it in the nature book. You can't watch planet Earth. You know, you have to experience it. Go to nature and feel the presence of the divine everywhere, in every rock, in every stone, in every tree. Just feel it. And that's beautiful. And you have to add a bit of an attentive mind and a bit of imagination. And a trickery, your ego has to go away. You know, just leave the human being, nature, the divine, and the magic will happen, the medicine will happen. But you have to remove yourself a little bit. You need to have a bit of a, 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 a ego loss. A little bit, and then you regain some balance. And sometimes people go there and oh, nothing happened, nothing crazy happened. They're depressed because Mother Nature didn't give them the medicine, didn't give them the vision, and yet it was there in front of the eyes all the time. That's what I'm saying. Be attentive, listen, look at everything is around you. You know, you're in the spirit world, so you have to adjust to the way things are and yet of course you know you're start well you're start you're fasting you're, uh, you're, you're you're not sleeping maybe you know all those things you're alone of course those are all ingredients to get high of course you might have vivid dreams another state of 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 of, of a body experience and trances and hallucination yes this can happen but maybe it's just your will to happen. Maybe you're projecting this. You know, maybe you're thinking, oh, this should happen. Maybe it's happening. Maybe it is happening. But more often than not, it's more gentle and subtle. Transformation can be with fireworks, but transformation usually is more subtle and gentle. And it comes, and it comes, and it comes. Now, I need a volunteer. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> um, it's also important not to exaggerate. Um, the importance of vision in outer states because the vision are not an end on themselves. You know, someone say, oh, this eagle has landed on my head. Yeah, great, so what? You know, is it, how is it going to make you any better? How is it going to benefit your community? That's a great story, but, you know, it's not making any deep transformation inside you. So just, 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 just be aware of all this. Um, uh, sacred fire, the ultimate symbol of every story, every myth, every mythology, because fire is both, you know, 
the light and the heat and the birth and the, and the life giver and burning and destroyer, creator and destroyer at the same time. And so it's a, it's a magical element. And if you feel comfortable, if the land allows you, then do the fire. But don't do the fire because you want a cup of tea. Don't do the fire because you want to feel warm. Do the fire because there is a reason for it. Otherwise, that wood that you're going to burn, maybe it was useful for some animal. It was used for something else. So be aware. And know how you do it so you don't burn the place down. And then, and then when you finish, remove everything. And I'm going to say that over and over. Whatever you do, you have to walk light steps on this earth. So whatever you do, you're a guest. You have to remove your passage, leave no trace. Um, and then the fasting, of course. Um, and this is, uh, fasting has been used forever by mainstream religion, by cult and sex, by everything, you know. It's, it's, it's a way of self-empowering. And uh, this is, uh, um, it's about being hungry, it's not just physical, but it's also psychological. Is that feeling of emptiness, and the ultimate emptiness is death. So how does it work? Why? Why? And yet, if you want to, how can you, how can you mend um, a heart if it's not broken? How can you fill a vessel if it's not empty? So you empty yourself so you can be filled again with light. You know, just, just, just remember this. That's what we're going through through this process. And fast will not harm anyone. You know, we can be without eating for weeks. It's not a big deal. But our conditioning is like, oh my God, I need to cook, I need to eat. Oh my God, this, you know, all for knows. Oh, it's one o'clock, I need to eat now. You know, it's that kind of thing that we always think, oh, I haven't eaten for like two hours. Maybe I'm starving. Maybe no. You know, Vision <laughs> Quest, you know, Vision Quest, if you do it, there are some version without water, add it with water, and then maybe a glass of water, that's all you need. You know, it's... It's, uh, it's, it's okay. Um, why I'm bringing this? <laughs> this is like from the Old Testament. This is Jacob fight, fighting with the angel. I don't know if you know this story. But basically Jacob was there and then he got visited by this man, which was an angel. And then that fighting all night long. And then... And then all night long, all night long, fighting, fighting, fighting. And then at the end, the morning is coming, and the angel wants to go. And Jacob said, no, no, I'm going to keep you here. And he said, oh, please let me go, let me go. Okay, then you have to do something for me. What am I going to do? Oh, I need your blessing. And I said, okay, that's my blessing. What's your name? Jacob. From now on, you're going to be called Israel. He gave him a name. He fought all night with an angel, and he got his name. And maybe that's all you have to do, a vision quest. Maybe you have to fight all night to get a name. And that is the medicine name. So some people come back from Vision Quest with a medicine name. What is a medicine name? It's another name for you, and usually two words, and it captures and encapsulates <coughs> maybe you and your qualities and your essence. But how do you get the name? Well, you have to be attentive. Maybe the wind is whispering the name. Maybe the cloud is telling you the name. Maybe the stone is telling you the name. Are you attentive? Are you ready for it? And I can tell you, I got so many names. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say something, oh, that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> An eagle with a rainbow. Oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> but you're fooling yourself all the time. You always want the best name. Yeah. You know, like, oh my God, yeah. I want the best name. <laughs> but then when the real name arrives, then you know it. It's no joke. You get it, it's like, oh, oh, of course. Clearly. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you don't say it because otherwise you lose the power. Because the name grows with you. You know, you become the name and the name becomes you. And the more you talk about it, because you want, if it's a cool name, you just want to go back. Oh, guys, I'm going to say. So you lose it. It dilutes its energy. So just keep it. Sure. I ain't saying to anybody. Not even to often. I ain't saying. Um, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a blessing. And maybe sometimes they'll come back with a name. And then you think, oh, what the... F oh, <laughs> I know the name! And you start crying. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of angels to fight in your life. You're going to get the name another time. Just just be attentive. 
you know, you're trying to division quest, but if it doesn't happen, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know who is this guy. Um, <laughs> looks American. Um, <laughs> the purple circle. Okay, the purple <laughs> circle. What is it? So basically, at the end, on your last night, after food deprivation, you're going to sleep deprivation. So the last night, you have to stay awake. All night. So you're tired, you're exhausted, everything's going on. Or well, maybe no, maybe you're super happy. And then the last night, you're going to be awake all night. So, what, how are you gonna, so you're going to find another space, a sacred space for you, sacred and magical place, and you're going to build this circle. The circle. So you prepare it one day before. It takes preparation because you have to put the intention and you have to select those stones. And you pick the stones and you fill it. You ask, are you the right stone for my purple circle? <laughs> and I'm not kidding. There is, th these things is happening all the time. You speak to nature and nature speaks to you all the time. So you find your stone and you make it not too big, not too small. You're going to stay there all night. So imagine this is what, quite right. But if you're going to make a fire, just have some space for the fire. Bring your wood, whatever you have to bring. Just make sure that you're going to stay there. You're going to stay awake all night. And the circle is... A clearly magical symbol. No beginning, no the end. The planet is a circle. Life is a circle. We are a circle. It's the you know, circle of self. And so the purple circle, it's, it's basically you're going to find your space in your universe. That's what it is. It's a representation of the universe. And you're going to go in the center for your last night. It's all aligned with the direction. So north, south, east, west. Upward, downward, inward, outward, all the direction you can possibly imagine. It. And then, of course, you ask permission, the blessing, the prayer, all this has to be done, the offering, all the time. But that, without me telling you, you're going to do this all the time because you're going to feel, oh, I'm coming to this space, let me ask permission. It's, it's, it's normal, you're going to feel it. And so, on the last night, um, you go inside your circle and this night is the longest night it's an emotional night you might cry a lot you might laugh you might dance you might sing you can't sleep but everything you've done so far is to go to this night to get your medicine, to go to the next stage in your life. Because why you do vision quest? As I said, you might want to mark a stage in life, but maybe you're celebrating a new beginning. Maybe you're marking an end. You know, all those reasons that we said at the beginning. And they all come here. So on the last night, you go into your purple circle with your purpose at the center of the universe. And you ask for a vision. You cry for a vision. That's what we say. You cry for a vision. Not just for yourself, but to bring it back to the people. And how do you do it? How do you cry for a vision? No one is going to tell you how to do it. You do it the way you want. And if you want to sing, sing. If you want to dance, dance. But no words are necessary. All you care, all is matter. It's a pure heart. And then something, you know, ask for a vision. And listen, listen to the answer. And of course I was there expecting God on the flying souls, you know, coming down and an angel dancing. And, no, this is not going to happen. Oh, maybe yeah. Maybe yeah. I don't know. That's your story. That's your story. Possibly. But it's there. Just listen, pay attention to the answer. And the answer could be there, but it could be inside. And you feel it. You feel it. And maybe you're going to have a strong direction, and then the vision is going to be, that's what's going to be, here, now. But maybe no. And the transformation is going to happen afterwards. Maybe it's going to take six months, one year, ten years, whatever. And I can tell you, at my vision quest, I didn't have a vision of exactly who I'm going to be, but somehow, everything starts changing in my life. You know, in my work, in my family, many things are happening. 
and I know it's connected with this. I know, I can feel it. As soon as I decided to make a lecture about this, so many things are happening. Because, you know, you forget. And then, uh, we're gonna talk about that as well. Um, so, I call this one, okay, yeah. So then, after you finish everything, and the, the light of the day start coming, even before the sun comes out, then you're giving birth to yourself. That's what happened. You're becoming your greater self, your higher self. You're not initiate anymore, you're initiated. That's what, that's what happened. And then, when you say thanks for everything, you say thanks to the spirit, thanks to the nature, thanks to everything that happened to you. Remember at the beginning, I told you the most important thing was the reason why you're doing this? Then you ask yourself, you stand in the circle and you say, why am I returning? Why am I going back? Hmm. That is as important as why did you go and do Vision Quest in the first place? Hmm. You might have an answer, maybe not, but just, just think about it immediately. And sometimes you feel like you don't want to go back. You know, there's a reluctance. You know, it's so beautiful there. Why do you want to go back? You know, you went through everything, your adventure, your deal, you create your new self. But this is just a form of self-indulgence. And you have to face the life that you have created. Otherwise, what's the point? You're making a new life and then, okay, forget about it. It doesn't work like that. And other, you know, the requests that are coming back as well. You know, be careful at completion as you were at the beginning. Because that is the time of the incorporation. It's the most difficult bit, actually. So what happened? You say bye to everything. Everything that's been your life. First of all, you remove the purple circle, or the stone, you just leave one stone, just to remember the place, because you'll have to go back in one year time. I'll tell you about it. Uh, mm -hmm. But you, you remove every trace of your, of your presence. You know, the life was there before, the place was there before you, it'll be there after you, don't make a mess. You know, just, and then go back to your, uh, to the place where you were, say thanks for, for having, make the blessing, the offering, whatever you have to do, and then you go back. You go back to your life. You're going to go back to your habits and your patterns and your <coughs> prizes and your relationship and your, I don't know, mortgage and words and all the problems. And so what? Just teach yourself that the civilized world is not only profane, but it's sacred very much as well and is worthy of your quest. And of course, as I say, there is a, a certain lack of comprehension sometimes. You know, when you go back and people just don't understand what you're doing, but it doesn't matter. Don't try to explain too much. So for one year, you don't talk about Vision Quest. That is the first time I'm talking so much about Vision Quest. Mm -hmm. Because for one year, you want to hold the experience and let it set in and grow within you. Otherwise, it just goes. And that is the main problem. How I'm going to keep the purpose? How I'm going to keep the vision? How I'm going to keep doing what I've just learned. I'm going to keep the medicine and bring it back because everything can get lost so easily. How many times we go for holidays, someone amazing, and you come back, life takes you back, all in one go. But you know, don't lose the lesson. So how do you do? So you go back to base camp, the beginning, you know, go back, go back to base camp and the elders are there waiting for you and you go back into the circle that they prepare, you go back into the physical world again and there's magic and prayer and everything and that symbolizes your will to return. And then you share some food, mm. finally. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe you want to eat a lot, maybe you don't want to eat at all. Maybe you eat a little, a little bit, maybe not too much. But that symbolizes your will to share. And then you bring something back. Traditionally, you bring something from your vision quest, you bring something back, and you give it as a present to whoever you want, you know. And that, <coughs> again, symbolizes your <coughs> will of, of, uh, of uh, sharing. And then you wash yourself, you change your clothes. Again, you don't want to, you don't want to linger any longer. You know, you're going to move. You, this is done. You're going to move to the next stage. But before you go back into your real life, into your life, 
you know, you have to face the elder, and there's one thing that you do, which is the mirroring story with the elder. So you go there, so you don't talk about it, you don't talk about vision quest to anybody apart from the elders because they understand, they know, they've done it. So you go there and you're in front of the council of the elders and you tell them everything you've done, everything you saw and felt, and there's no reason to hide anything other than hide anything. And why you do that? Why, why are you telling them everything? As soon as you finish, they're going to tell you the story back. They're going to tell you your story exactly, but with a meaning with a symbol, with a pattern that you didn't grasp because you were in the middle of the experience, so you didn't realize what was going on. But the elders, with their wisdom, because they've done it so many times, they can see what you were doing, so they're going to tell you the same story. And I know it sounds a bit abstract, but it was very profound and deep um, experience, the telling of the story. Um, and then you go to the journey back. And then it's people, it's telephone, it's train and cars, and all that things. And then there's the danger of being totally disgusted by the world. And thinking, wow, oh, but that's the world that you live in. That's the world of your loved ones. That's the world of the family, the world of your friends. This is not a bad world. You know, just always combine, always combine. Of course, the people have not done Vision Quest, so you have to adapt to them, but they will adapt to you as well. It's not a problem. And it's normal that after a few weeks of excitement, there is also the calm down. You went high, you're going down. Illumination, darkness. That's classic. And so, <laughs> the yogi teaches his disciple to return to the ordinary world. When he say, after samadhi, we sweep the floor. Samadhi as a state of higher consciousness. So after samadhi, we sweep the floor. Dreams and vision will not sweep your floor, but your vision might bring you many dirty floors to sweep. Thank you. <laughs> sharing so generously and, um, and giving us so many so many points to think about. Um, and I know you don't get nervous about my question, but <laughs> <laughs> um, no, my question is to do with um, this sense of apartness and integration. And I just wondered if you wanted to say, you know, any further thoughts that you might have had about the, the way we go away from the ordinary world, um, you know, to do something like that. And then there's the coming back. and But all the way through, you talked about how the earth is sacred, how daily life is sacred, how the point is integration and community. And I just wondered if you wanted to say a bit more about, you know, how, you know, how, how that idea of giving and integration has been important for you. There's so much about the idea of something like a vision quest or a spiritual quest that is can be very, very individualistic and not thinking about giving an integration. Um, and you know, we can have theories about you know, capitalism and, and individuation and, and things like that. But this, this comes out of a very community-based traditions, uh, communities. Um, and, and yet you're, and, and you're, you're working with that as other people in Vision Quest. So just to say a little bit about, yeah, about community. I think, um, I think, yeah. Okay. I think, <coughs> you know, why do you want to be enlightened? Why do you want to heal yourself? Why do you want to get some medicine? If it's just for you, I mean, that's very selfish. Are you really going to get enlightened if you're so selfish? You don't want to get anything. You know, we're not here. I mean, do you live in a cave on the Himalaya without any connection with the world? I mean, why you're doing things, you know? You receive gifts, you receive blessings, you receive vision. Use them. That's the whole point. And this is very present in Vision Quest, but in many other. But Vision Quest, it's absolutely 
you have to do it to benefit the whole community. And it's your people. Whoever your people are, nobody's telling you this. You know, it could be your friends and family, but it could be whoever you want. But what is the point otherwise? You just do it for, okay, yeah, I met God and great. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna write a book about it. I mean, this is not that kind of experience. You know, you do it for, you do it for yourself, but for other people. Then one thing that you can do, specifically, if you want to go and do vision quest for someone else. So I've done vision quest also for my brother. So let me tell you this. So my brother is going through a difficult time. So one of the reason, one of the intention of doing vision quest was to help him. I don't know if he worked. Well, maybe I think so. I think so. In a funny sort of way. Um, and and but but you cannot just do it uh, because you feel like some friends are gonna save the world or I'm gonna pick those people and save them. It doesn't work like that. You have to have a very strong connection with that person that you're gonna heal, and you have to know that. You cannot achieve vision quest without the help of the person that you want to help. If that makes sense. It's, it's a, it's a two-way condition. It's not you are going to be saving the world. It's not like that. So, you, but it has to be clear. So you have to make an announcement and a statement with the elders. At the beginning, you say, okay, I'm doing vision quest for... Because the elders, as soon as you arrive, after you've been asking yourself, why am I doing vision quest, why am I doing vision quest, then as soon as you arrive, they're going to ask you, why are you doing vision quest? And then you answer, and then after a few hours, they're going to ask you again. And then they're going to ask you again. Because it's all about that inter... So, so you have to make a statement. Say, okay, I'm doing this because of this, this, this. That will benefit those people. And I also do it for my brother. In my case, it was specific. And, and, and we talk a little bit about that. So you can, you, can, you, can, you can be the community at large. Your people. Your people. Whatever you want to interpret that. But it can also be specific for the person, but you have to have a very strong connection with that person. Oh, thank you for that. Right. Who's got questions? Hands. Let me see hands so I know who wants to ask. Let's start at the back. Hi there, and then we'll move to the front. Hi. So yeah. for the bad yeah. Six yeah. Six yeah. Hi, I'm Simon. Thank you for your talk. Great. Um, so I'm doing a vision quest in September, also in Wales. Um, and uh, is it something that you said? Uh, if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't find, find it. Mm. And I could probably mm, put some words around my sense of why I'm doing it. Um, and at the same time, uh, I think there's a sense that I'm doing it, and I don't really know fully why I'm doing it. So, just something around, you know, maybe wanting to keep that fairly broad, but not too broad, you know, kind of have some focus but not too narrow I guess and just what this absolutely to you don't have to be you know some people are very specific but you know I did it when I turned 40 yeah so for me it was going from childhood to adulthood you know it was it was anyway so and I'm still thinking about it. so anyway so so that was that was that was for me for a reason then I had my brother with me but then there was it's an idea of, I want to go into a different state, a different stage of my life. Did I, want, did I know exactly how I want to be? Maybe no. It was not so defined. But I knew that there was an imbalance. I knew that I, I was, there was things that need to be addressed. I had a vague idea about, yeah, maybe this aspect, maybe this aspect. But it was not exactly, oh... This person is toxic for me, I need to remove him. Oh, I need to move country, I'm going to leave him. I don't know, whatever. You know, it was not exactly like that. But you know that there is something that you have to adjust. Because Vision Quest, you're going to mark something. You know, you're going to celebrate something. You're going to, you're going to ask for a vision. For what? Your, your new life, your next stage of life. So, you know, have an idea of something. It doesn't have to be defined. Because we're not academic here. You know, it's, it's human experience. You know, life is never so, nature is never so defined itself. So, but as long as you know, you know, the intention is there and the commitment is there without being too precise, then I, I, I will say, yeah, perfect, go for it. <laughs> Thank you. But for those who are precise and have had precise intention, could you give us a, a few examples? Because you must have heard what the elders were asking, other people answering. What did people come up with? 
Well, people come up with all sorts of things. Right. Yeah. Sometimes, I'm not going to be precise, but sometimes maybe there's been someone dying in, uh, who was very close to that person. And you want to make um, you want to make vision quest to mark you know to let go of that pain of that suffering and and move on without abandoning that person who died but you know not keep the attachment that brings you down that doesn't allow you to move forward so so that is definitely something yeah. that I mean in traditional culture as I say you know you celebrate every aspect of life you know. In even even divorce. I mean, nowadays we celebrate it in court. Uh, if you if you if you if you retire, you know, we go to the pub have a pint with the friends. That was a different thing. Now, if you get old, they put you in a care home. You know, those people who become elders and keep it with them. So it's a different perception. And as I say, you celebrate, you, you mark a stage of life that makes you understand where you are and gives you the tool a little bit. You know, it's not like a manual that says, oh, now you're an adult, you're going to do this, this, and this. It's not exactly like that. But you make a point and you understand, okay, now, okay, I'm in a different stage. Because otherwise, you're a bit lost. We never know where we are. Are we married? Are we working? Are we kids? We never know. We're a bit lost. And that vagueness can cause problems, can, can leave us a bit, you know, anxiety and stress and self hatred and guilt and all that kind of thing. I'm like, oh my God, who am I? What am I? And that's why when you place yourself in the purpose circle of your own universe and you ask for a vision or you're like, this is all, you make it. And even if you don't get a clear answer, you're doing it. You're experiencing. And nature is there witnessing. It's, it's powerful enough. And you're on your own. So nobody's coming there to tell you and look at. You're on your own, and this is very powerful. You're empowering yourself to create your own medicine. You're self-healing yourself. Without the doctor, the guru, the teacher who's telling you, oh, do this. Don't listen to me. Gabriel told me to do this. No, no, no. You just do it yourself. You know? And that's beautiful. Two questions right here. Mm-hmm. Yes, Peter. But right at the beginning when you compared Wales to uh, yes. Ireland. Yes. <laughs> if you're going to my government about Wales. But... Um, if you imagine 3,000, 4,000 years ago, Wales would have been full of Celts and there would be all sorts of religious ceremonies going on. Um, and when you sat in that field, you could have been attracted to that field because you don't know what was 10 feet of course. underneath of course. that ground. And in that circle, you might have been where you were sat, you might have been in a, a religious circle. Absolutely. For example, the TV program a few weeks ago, I think it's Billingsgate, there's a piazza <laughs> and there's a, a big blue circle. And that circle is indicating that underneath is a Roman amphitheater. And that's the circumference of the amphitheater. Well, you know, there is, the, there is the, the, the power of the land, of course. And we, you know, I was here in Europe, so obviously you connected, you know, I'm European. So you connected, uh, Brexit was supposed to be tomorrow. Uh, uh, you, connect with, with, you connect with your own land, of course. Of course you can go to the Amazon. You can go to Utah, or wherever, or Mexico, you know, and that's very valid. But you know, you're born here. Your connections are here. You know, for, you know, you don't have to, I mean, it's a di- you know, it's a different value, but obviously the land has its history and has its memory, and you might want to connect and tap with it if you want to. Yeah. yeah. I'm very reminded that, you know, that, you know, say no man is a hero in his own land, but I met an American um, and, and who had come over and I'm going, I'm going to the most sacred place that I've wanted to go to for 20 years. And, um, and I believe that, you know, and I've been told that there are, you know, true ancient witches there and I can't, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm going on a pilgrimage. And um, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And I said, where is it? He said, I don't think I can say. Yeah. But we spoke for a little while and then eventually he leaned in and he said, well, I don't want to say because I don't want the place to be flooded with people like going to this power spot. And he, uh, and he said, well, I'm going to tell you. And he leaned over to me and he said, it's called Murder Tidville. 
and, and you know, and, and like I'm half American, so I understand that. You know, that it's, 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 it, 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 you know, this Celt it is a Celtic idyll, particularly for people who, who've emigrated to other other continents. And and honestly, if you grow, you know, if you live in South America, as I did in my teens, and you go say, oh, I'm going to Brazil, that'd be like. Which beach, you know, so, so, so the, exotic, the exotic is always 3,000 miles ago, you know, um, but the secret is always with us, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, people, people get, I was just in California and I say, I live in London and they're like, oh. <laughs> it's amazing. Here, like, it is amazing. It is amazing. I love it. I love it. This is, I mean, this is my safest space. There you go. Anyway, Andre. Yes. Hi. Thank you for, for your talk and for your passionate uh, words on this. I like I'm Portuguese and I understand the South European wise. And it's actually uh, coming, continuing that uh, with that construction of culture and uh, how Vision Quest is obviously shaped by the Native Americans and you were experiencing that in a Native American context but with the power of the land of European, European art. And my own experience, and I wanted to kind of a feedback from you on that, is when, many years ago, I did some kind of vision quest myself, just because I looked in the internet, vision quest, going to the woods, power places, okay, I'll do that. So I didn't have any context, except I was finishing my degree, I was going to start work, that was a right of passage. Seemed a good idea at the time. And it was not as extreme. I did not fast, but I didn't do too much. And I was camping uh, in, the, in the end of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a camping park, and I was going away every day and coming back only at night. So kind of a more moderate, but... Comfortable one. Comfortable one, <laughs> yes. However, things were a bit less comfortable when I was chased by wolf-like dogs, and I was in the middle of nowhere with the storms going all around me. So there was some kind of a severance that you call this part of the thing. And something, I brought something with it. And I found power places where I understood more about connection with cosmos, especially with music, where I understand more of my gods, which are actually more Northern European than Southern European. So even though I don't think it was a Native American vision quest, I had some kind of quest that was to my view, and I was just talking about it last week with somebody I just met, very, very the beginning of something that then shaped me to the rest of my life. And so my question is, does Vision Quest have to be Native American, or can we find other Vision Quests of other traditions and learning from each tradition to kind of make our own? Yeah, I think, I think you know, I clearly make a reference to Native American because they are still doing it. You know, so if you go, you know, th those, those, those people are still doing it <coughs> as marking passes in life um, very much to this day. And usually they go just, they have a blanket, they go, they don't have water, they don't have anything, they just go and do it. I mean, in traditional Buddhism quest, you don't have shelter as well, you don't have a tent, you don't have anything like that. So there is a, a, the connection with the, with, the, with the world, with the nature is kind of interesting because maybe you're preparing a special ceremony and then there is a thunderstorm arriving or maybe the wolves are arriving but as i say everything that's happening around you is a reflection of what's happening inside and other way around so maybe you had a bit of a storm inside going on maybe wolves going around i don't know just i don't know just that you know um i think you know as i say you know the native american is present but in the idea of being alone in nature fasting it's all over the world, all over the world. You know, you might want to call it vision fast, but you go to Africa, you know, you know, you become a man, you go and go and hunt the lion or whatever, you know, just go on your own in nature, you know? You know, that's happened, as I, as I show you, you know, Buddhists started with Buddha under the tree. You know, this is, uh, or Moses going to the mountain, you know, those, 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 the idea of fasting and being alone in nature, it's, um, is a, it's an archetype, you know, it's, a, it's part of who we are. And I don't know, monks go fasting, monks and nuns, you know, like this is, this is you know, you go to Ramadan, Ramadan is fasting for a month, you know, like this, the, the idea of purification through fasting or the idea of being alone, trying to connect with God, your God. I mean, it's, it's clearly that if you're alone and if you're fasting and if you're in nature, those are ways of changing a little bit your normal reality, maybe your normal understanding, and then you will get 
the synchronicity, the symbol, and the sign, and the coincidence, and all this will happen. But you have to you have to put an intention in it and try to do it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen just like that because you're watching Netflix. You know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, so, but this will happen. This will happen. And then, some people will have the ecstatic moment and the vision or whatever. Some people know, but it doesn't matter. The experience is the human experience of being alone in nature fasting. That's 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 regardless of where, how, when, and it's forever, and and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and it's intense. Um, and it's painful and it's joyful and when you finish Vision Quest after your, after your last night all you can emanate is love and joy that's all you have that's, there's nothing else left regardless of what your preparation you know, that you're just becoming this bundle of joy <laughs> it's, and that's why there's a calm down afterwards <coughs> You know, it's, uh, but, that, but that's, that's what it is. Because, and it's not joy because, oh, now oh, I've achieved, I've done what I want. No, it's because everything that you thought, everything that you prepared, it's not important anymore. You know, it's the connection. It's that communion. You with nature, nature as a manifestation of the divine. And what does it bring you? What does it make you feel, you know? Are we alive? We're humans. You know what? What does it mean? It's beautiful. <laughs>